Hello, my name is Caleb Messer and I'm going to be giving you a study guide and key to the identification of the skull bones. So the first bone I'm going to talk about is the parietal bone. There's actually two parietal bones and they come in a pair, they're on each side. And the way I want you to remember that is that parietal sounds similar to the word pair. So that will help you remember that there's two of them. They're on both sides, top of the head. Not necessarily the front or the back, but in the middle region. The next bone is the occipital bone, which is in the back of the head. The next bone is the temporal bone. You have one on each side at the temple of your head. So the temporal bone has two extensions that we call the mastoid process and the styloid process, which it's kind of hard to see. But I want you to think of the mastoid being the bigger one and the styloid being the smaller one. And the styloid sounds like the word stylus, which means a pen or the tip of a pen. So when you think of the two processes, you can remember that styloid is the smaller one then you'll remember the mastoid's the bigger one. It's important to remember that these bones, the mastoid and styloid process, are not necessarily new bones, they're more extensions of the temporal bone. The next two bones are the zygomatic arch and the zygomatic bone. This is your cheekbone, and the zygomatic arch connects your temporal bone to your zygomatic bone. While we're on the topic of facial bones, let's talk about two of the most important ones, the maxilla and the mandible. These are your upper and lower jaw, maxilla being the upper, mandible being the lower. The mandible is the, is the jaw bone that actually opens up while the maxilla remains stationary. The next bone I'll talk about, number 10, is the frontal bone. It's the skull bone that's right in the front of your face. So this is where your forehead is. I just remember it because it's in the front. The next one, number 11, is also a very easy bone to remember. It's the nasal bone and it makes up the little bridge above your nasal cavity. The next bone is the vomer, which is this little lined bone inside the nasal cavity. And I like to remember this one because the Harry Potter villain Voldemort has no nose and vomer kind of sounds like Voldemort. So just think of Voldemort when you see this bone. The bone I will next talk about is the sphenoid bone. It's this red bone labeled 13. It stretches out on both sides. It goes behind your eyes and it's also referred to as the wasp or butterfly bone because it looks like those insects, it goes behind your eyes and forms this kind of base bone. So the sphenoid bone is not to be confused with these other two bones in the eye cavity. This is the lacrimal and ethmoid bone. The lacrimal bone gets its name from lacrimal fluid, which is tears, and that's where your tear ducts are. Ethmoid is a little bit deeper in there, but it's the other part of the eye cavity closest to the nose. So while the sphenoid cavity is closer to your temple and the outside of your eye cavity, this one comes a little bit close to your nose. We call that the ethmoid bone. Next, we're gonna talk about the three foramens found in your skull. The foramens are little tiny little divots that you'll see across the front of the skull. The first one is the supraorbital foramen. So supra means above, orbital means your eye cavity. So think when you think supraorbital, think above your eye and it's the little dots on both sides. The next foramen, easily enough, is the infraorbital foramen. Infra meaning below, orbital meaning eye again. So just think below the eye will be the infraorbital foramen. Finally, the last foramen we're going to talk about is the mental foramen. So if you remember when we went over body regions, your chin area is referred to as the mental region. Just think of that when you think of the mental foramen. It's on the side of your mandible. Number 20 is the supraorbital arch, which is this whole brow line where our eyebrows are. It's called supraorbital because it's above the eye and it's an arch, arches across your facial bones. There are three different types of sutures that connect these skull bones to each other. The first one we'll talk about is the coronal suture, which goes left to right, separating the two parietal bones and the frontal bone. If you remember talking about the cuts of the body, transverse, coronal, and sagittal, the coronal cuts us into a front and back half. Think of that when you think of the coronal suture, which if you cut right there would make us into a front and back half. The next suture separates the two parietal bones, left and right. This is the sagittal suture. Again, if you look at it, it goes straight down the middle. And if you made a sagittal cut on the body, it would cut us into left and right sides. The last type of suture obviously is a little bit differently shaped. It's a curve, almost makes a circle out of the back of your head. These are called the lamboid sutures. I don't have a trick to remember these, but if you remember that sagittal and coronal are the straight down the middle and straight down the sides ones, you should be able to remember that this is the lamboid suture in the back of the head.
When we turn the skull upside down, we see this hole in which the brain connects to the spinal cord. This is called the foramen magnum. Now, I told you there were only three foramens in the skull, which is the supraorbital, infraorbital, and the mental. We have this one more, which is a way bigger than those two tiny little divots, which is why we call it the magnum. So think when you think of this, think of the divot, but it's really a hole, magnum, which means huge. Another bone we can see here are the occipital condyles, which are these little arches or prominence in the occipital bone. So they surround the foramen magnum and make two little notches at the edges of it. These are called the occipital condyles. And the last bone we are studying is the palatine bone. I like to think about the palate of your mouth. It's actually the roof of your mouth. If you would stick your tongue in the roof of your mouth and feel that hard bone you feel is the palatine bone. So if you just think of your palate, this will help you remember that this is the palatine bone. And that's all the different bones of the skull. I hope this study guide helps you guys.